Hello everybody, this is Tor Storley and I'm back for another video. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at the Office JS add-ins that you can create. So I'm going to take a look at working with Excel add-in today. And I'll also show you what I ended up doing by creating my add-ins with the new Visual Studio 2022 that was just recently released. So let's get started and take a look at this one. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to run my add-in so you can actually see how it shows up. So I'm starting it right now and you're going to see Excel popping up here like this and it's loading the add-in into the Excel window like this. So I'm using Office 365 and if you look over here on the right hand side, there is a show task pane showing up. So when I click that one now, I loading my add in here and I just gave them a header here. Uh, it has a banner on the top and this particular add in is going to get data from Yahoo Finance by running a query against Yahoo Finance based on whatever parameters are passing in here. So behind the scene is runs a web API that I created that goes out to Yahoo Finance and gets the data. So if you look here, I have some text for instructions. I'm telling you what kind of time interval you want to look for and what the ticker is. So right now I just have a default ticker for Avi Inc. And I have the date range default for one day. So if you, in case you click, it won't get too much data. So let's go and get maybe, oh, I don't know. Let's get one month worth of data here. I'll get back to this data filter here in a second. I have a table here I created and it has some styled buttons that are part of this office fabric and they style it according to Microsoft stylistics, you know, the right colors, the right uh, effects, etc. Now I have a mix because I overwrite some of those just to make it look a little different. So this is the table. First step is to say get data and notice down on the but bottom here, you see a banner popping up. And once the data loads, you can see that banner goes away. So here's the raw data from Yahoo Finance. And as you can see, it carries many decimals. We are getting a date, open, high, low, close, adjusted close, and volume for that particular ticker symbol. So what I can do, I can format the data. So I click Format Data. And as you can see, now I'm removing some of the decimals to make it more easy to read. And also notice that the data is sorted in descending order now, where the first date is the latest date. And the, this one is the oldest date in this data set. I can also add formulas to this table. I click this rate, rate of return and it goes in and it sorts the data in descending order. And then it adds the formula in here and it copies it down. So if you look at the formula, it uses something called a continuous compounding rate of return. And you use a log function where you take the latest dates. In this case, I'm using the adjusted close. So I basically take this and I divide it on this, but I do it in a log fashion here, as you can see. So F2 divided on F3 gives you this rate of return. So we have this extra column here. So let's just go and get some uh, different data maybe for three months this time. And let's do a different ticker, maybe Palantir. So it goes out here, it puts up the banner. It's retrieving data. It comes back like this, so I can format it. I can write the rate of return like this. I can also add bars. So I'm using conditional formatting here. So I click here and I base it on the adjusted close. So as the price gets higher here, you can see it gets a wider bar and it gets less when it's a lower price. You can see here 1898. Not a little confusing here because it's in blue, altering the table here with blue as well. If we went into the table design and maybe changed the table to look a different color, you can see it's showing up a little easier to read in this case. That's the bar. I can also add icons. Let's say I want to figure out for the rate of return. When is it increasing? When is it decreasing? So I can click add icons. It chooses this icon set for the conditional formatting for these arrows up and down. So as you can see here, for example, for the rate of return, it was positive here, but it was negative here. So you have those red and the green buttons. So it indicates that. 
and it gives you a quick way of seeing if there's been continuous you know upwards here like you can see here for example so that what you can do you can also clear those formats so i clear them like this I can create a price chart maybe because i selected three months from the filter it creates this three months price chart and I'm using these parameters in the header here dynamically. And as you can see, this is a candle kind of price chart. Let me remove that chart because it doesn't really sync up with if I filter data. I want to filter some data here. All these filters are available to me based on something called dynamic criteria, dynamic filter criteria. And I base that on the date. So as you can see here, I got all kinds of filters I can use. Let's say I want to see for the period of November, I'm going to filter it. So I click filter data. And now, as you can see, it's filtered for November. Now I'm going to add the price chart. You can see this is for all of November here. You can see it right here. Then, of course, I can clear the filter. You can see it down here too, the banner. I update the banner with which type of filter I use. I can also clear the filter and that goes away again. So as you can see, the problem with the filtering is that it doesn't adjust this price chart when I do this. I will have to do some modification to sync it up with this part with the price chart. And also, because you filter, these rows get shifted up. How about yesterday? And I filter that. You can see it disappears totally here, this price chart. So it's not synced up properly. So that's uh, some work that needs to be done. Of course, the data is getting messed up too when you do that. So we can remove that chart. So that's my add-in. Okay, so I got a blank workbook. One thing you can do, you can go to this Insert tab. You can go to Get Add-ins. And if you have your own, you should be able to see them here. Whatever I've been selecting from the store will also show up. As you can see here is one of mine, Azure Machine Learning. And if you go to the store, you can see there's all kinds of add-ins here you can attach. One that I used in order to learn this, and along with a trial and error and a lot of documentation and videos, etc., you want to choose this script lab, okay? So you want to add that and, you know, attach it to your workbook. So when you do, you're going to see it like this. And it has some menu items in this ribbon here. So the one you want to probably use, you can do some reading on it if you want to, tutorials, help, etc. But you can click this code, and now the add-in opens up over here. And the nice thing about this add-in, and it gives you a lot of details about how add-ins works. You can go to samples. And when you go to samples, you can see they have all kinds of categories here of samples. And a lot of this stuff that I used, I got from here. And then I built on the top of that because there's a lot of dynamic stuff I'm doing that you don't find here. And uh, I was not able to figure out the web API from here. But I, I figured it out eventually after a lot of back and forth. But anyways, as you can see, there's um, basics. There's charts you can uh, look at. Uh, comments, conditional formatting, custom functions, custom XML parts. So for example, you could create, I'll show you this because that, that's not part of mine. So maybe we should take a look at that. You could create a slicer maybe. So if I run this, it will open up the home page. So the first thing you might want to do in these samples is to click add data. It adds the data in here. And then what I want to do is I want to add a pivot table. You can add a slicer and then you can format it, some styling. I can also add filters and remove them. And of course, you can use it over here too, just like you always do. And then, of course, you can remove it and, and so forth. But this is just one sample of how you can use this. And when you look here now, they give you the code that was used to make this happen. So you can just kind of start looking at that to understand how they're doing these things. Here's the HTML section. You have the CSS section. For some of these samples, they use specific libraries. Here they use jQuery and they have these core libraries they're using. They have the fabric JS CSS files. But one thing I should also notice out is that when you play around with specific types of data, for example, let me see if I can find it here. Working with dates, for example, if you run that particular sample and you add a sample data you can see here's the date then you can set the value using a timestamp and it tells you how, what happened down here and you can get the value you can see the timestamp here but one thing you need to be aware of with this particular one is that you might have to add another library in to work with these dates 
Because if you look at the libraries here, it uses what is called moment or moment. I don't know how you pronounce it. These libraries are added in to work specifically with dates. So as you can see here, using this moment function here to, to generate dates, etc. So that's something to be aware of when you work with dates. Now I avoided all this by doing it inside the JavaScript itself when I loaded my data. So the next thing we're going to do is to look at how I created that Visual Studio solution. So that's next.